the Joe Rogan experience. I mean, who has the ultimate influence in whether or not there is military action and how long that military action goes on for, right? Like, because Bernie Sanders and a lot of these people and Tulsi Gabbard, a lot of these people that are running for president say that if they got it, one of the things they would do is stop these interventional, interventionalist foreign wars and this uh, world police wars that we just go on and invade in other people's lives, that we would stop doing that. I think but that's who, great. Who, but, right, but who really gets to say? Like, who gets to say whether or not, war, like, who talks to Trump and says, let's just keep rolling into this place. What's rolling? There's a fucking problem over there. ISIS, ISIS building up. Let's bomb the fuck out of these people. Like, who has the real ear? I mean, is it, the, is it generals? I mean, does, is there any industry influence at all from weapons industries or from people who have deals with them? Or, you know, I mean, that's what Eisenhower warned about when he left office. You've heard that, right? Yeah. That is one of the craziest speeches a president has ever said. Trump says, you do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. Yeah. Wow. Remember he said he tried to pull some troops out and they wouldn't let him. Oh, that's right. Trump said that. Don't kid yourself, he says. You do have a military industrial complex. They do like war. You know, in Syria with the caliphate, so I wipe out 100% of the caliphate, that doesn't mean you're not going to have these crazy people going around blowing up stores and blowing up things. These are ser seriously ill people, but I wiped out 100% of the caliphate. I said, I want to bring our troops back home. The place went crazy. They want to keep, you have a problem here in Washington. They never want to leave. I said, you know what I'll do? I'll leave a couple hundred soldiers behind, but if it was up to them, They'd bring thousands of soldiers in. Someday people will explain it, but you do have a group, and they call it the military-industrial complex. They never want to leave. They always want to fight. No, I didn't want to fight, but you do have situations like Iran. You can't let them have nuclear weapons. You just can't let that happen, and it goes on. Bro. See, like, and that's, you know, that's one what of the, the th fuck? that's the thing with Trump. Nobody ever talks about, I feel like, is it's like, we've been pretty much anti, you know, we haven't been swayed into as many wars as I feel like we would have been. Who knows? I mean, who knows? I mean, maybe yes, maybe no. Maybe we're closer to war because of him. Who the fuck knows? Um, Trump administration considers 14,000 more troops for the Middle East. That was last week. Hmm. But he also discussing like, deployment. You know, who knows, man? Maybe they know things too. You know, the thing about talking to people like Jocko Willink and you know my friend Andy Stump and other other folks that have been over there, like they'll they'll tell you there's there's some times where things build up and radicals control cities and things get really ugly and they yeah. they have to have some sort of military intervention or these people keep growing and they you know they dump. That's the other thing that people aren't talking about like in afghanistan in particular the afghanis are working with the soldiers against these terrorist organizations like there's afghanis that are helping u.s soldiers it's not like all of the u.s against all of afghanistan no it's that they're combined against isis the, it's just the whole thing is so crazy that there's these groups these organizations that are like characters in a james bond movie or in a comic book right like think about like isis like something like isis that's like if you had a crazy movie about people that you know had a, a great leader who's just like the spiritual guy who lived in the mountains and you know like that's osama bin laden i mean he is like a character in a movie he used to work for the for the good guys then he switched over to the bad guys it's like someone in a Batman movie. Right. You know? Yeah. Lives in caves. Yeah. It's just, all of it is weird, man. All, I mean, the the whole thing about you draw Muhammad, they'll kill you. Like how extreme the religion is and how devoted people are. And you can't question any of it. It's the most extreme in that regard where it doesn't, doesn't allow any questioning of it. And then, you know, people can't understand that some people practice it the same way some people practice Christianity or some people practice uh, other things. They only, they only believe or take part in the positive, good parts of the religion. So there's a lot of people that are Muslims that are great people. They're really kind, 
really well educated, wonderful, thoughtful people. They don't have nothing to do with terrorists. And when there is some sort of uh, terrorist a- activity, it makes them feel bad that they're getting lumped in with someone who's doing horrific things. These people that you know end up committing to these extreme religions, I feel like in- we should be dropping like soccer balls and Nintendo switches from airplanes to give yeah. them things to do so that they're. Well, they they're stuck. B- believe in something. If you're stuck in a place that's got a, a very rigid religious ideology and radical, and you know you've been radicalized since you were young, and then you got places like Yemen, right? Places that are getting bombed by the U.S. for fucking robots. Planes are flying overhead. They're gunning down wedding parties accidentally and killing people. I mean, that happens. It's pretty common, right? So you're making more radicals. Because then there's people who lost their family members to some robot flying in the sky. That some kid is, you know, he's got an Xbox controller in his hand. And he's, he's shooting missiles. You know, they say those guys who are those pilots, they suffer PTSD as well. Those pilots are weirded out by that shit. You know, imagine being a drone pilot and you're watching something that you kind of know is happening. I mean, you definitely know it's happening, right? You're, you're controlling it. You see it. But when you hit that button, you watch those missiles... Choo, 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 choo. shoot down hellfire missiles they call them hellfire too which is crazy <laughs> shoot shoot down into these camps and shoot down into these uh motorcades like you know what you just did and most likely you're killing eight out of ten of those people who are innocent and because of the fact that a drone does it we're like eh, what are we gonna do yeah. like we had a soldier and like, hey, Tony, you got to stop killing innocent people. <laughs> hey, I'm a fucking killer, okay? You sent me after those bad guys. There's a lot of babies around. I had to fucking let them know. You ain't going to stop me from getting that bad guy. There's no way. We would put you in jail. Yeah. But if you have a, 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 an Xbox controller and you're shooting Hellfire missiles into a fucking school because you think that there's a terrorist in there. Like, what? And you know they set them up sometimes, too. They give bad advice or bad intel. Yeah. So they try to get someone to blow up a school or get someone to blow up a, a wedding party. Like, there's a lot of fuckery involved in anything you're doing like that where they know that if you do kill people, it's actually bad press. It's bad for you. Public, public perception goes the other way. 